don't seem right. It's nighttime. It is what it is. Hey, y'all. I was trying to get this lighting right so it don't got to be in my eyes, but don't look like that's going to happen. So we're just going to... Hey, y'all. I had to take me a nap, and then I talked to my baby, and then I took a bath, and then I just sat there, and then I went and read, and I figured I'd share what I read with y'all. Y'all want some class late at night? Y'all happy to be back home? Y'all happy to be back where it all started? Hey, I <laughs> what? Yeah, mm -hmm. girl, I forgot. Listen, I didn't got me some pajamas and stuff and some little outfits. I gotta get me a bucket or something to put in there. I'm gonna build something for my closet, girl. Goodness gracious, bigger clothes need more space. <laughs> hey, Kanisha. Hey, Tiff. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all gonna need y'all regular Bible gateway today. You know what I figured out too, y'all? My my glasses have so many scratches. You know they got that blue thing in them. And I think my eyes be tired because they be trying to read the scratch. Like, because some of it got the blue light filter, some of it don't. Some of it got the blue light filter, some of it don't. You know what I mean? Hey. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a know, I don't know what's going on with these lights, but it's about to be what it's about to be. Is y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Ho hopefully this is charged. What, how much I got on here? Damn it. I just want to let y'all know that Jesus Christ himself be talking petty. I mean, crazy to people. And he real, real petty in a lot of ways. So just get ready, because this is scripture here, what we about to read. Uh, it's scripture, and I don't, I don't know how the church people about to take this one. Hey, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how the church people about to take this one. And it's right in the Bible, they read every week. What they say they be reading it. Thank you, Bruce. It is, and it's also breaking. Maybe that's the Lord breaking some things off of me. <laughs> so I told y'all yesterday would have made eight years that I would have been married. That's still blowing me away. God will set you free. He'll set you free. He'll make your burdens light. You haven't been in a live class in so long. Oh, well, come on back. Is y'all ready to have class? Is y'all ready? Because, honey, I ain't even going to hold y'all with this one. I'm going to go on the bush. Let me get Tara out. Hey, girl. Who wasn't here for class earlier? <laughs> Petty. And, yes, I am going to do it. Who was missing from class earlier? Well, I'm going to just show y'all anyway. Look what Auntie Lisa sent me. <laughs> Prepare to be sick of me. Prepare to be sick of me. And no, it didn't just come with the vest. <laughs> I got both my places here. It's a USA on it. Andrew, both of the places here. I'm about to have to just walk around the house with this on because it's heavy. You hear me? Auntie Lisa got me right. And did prepare to be sick of me. I'm going to give me a sword thing to strap on here just in case. damn shooting game. Call of Duty. COD. That's what this made me think about. <laughs> yes, Lord. 
It's just so fluffy to me. Run, drop, and roll. It is, T-Baby. I got some amazing, amazing things from Japan and stuff, too. But this right here, nigga. This right here, nigga. This right here. I know probably one of my brothers got them, but I don't know if all of them got them. I was, a, you know, I'm going to have to call my brother and say, hey, bro, what's up? What's, what's up? How you doing? And I'm going to just grab, <laughs> grab on to my thing. My handles like this while I got it. I'm like, what's up? What's up? <laughs> they going to be like, see, this is why I, my oldest daughter said, mom, those people don't understand what they're doing. I said, they know exactly what they're doing and you mind your business. She said, do they know who they buying this stuff for? I said, shh. Shh. If I could have put my hand to a lip, it would have been one of them. I shh. 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 <coughs> Don't do me. You be quiet. You shut your mouth. She said, why do they keep buying you all of them sharp things? I said, huh? They, they're for skits. They're, they're, therefore, our, our, our com, Comic Con play over here. <laughs> you hear me? That's what they for. You need to mind your business. Mind your business. You in my business? <laughs> mm -mm -mm. She said, I just don't think it's safe. <laughs> I just, I just don't think that's safe, mama. I don't think they should do that. I said, you need to mind your business. Yeah, this is for cosplay. All the swords and it's for cosplay. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do over here, cosplay. Where's my hat? I ain't got one. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm an army and a soldier of the Lord. I mean, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord, so I need. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need what I need around here. But I hope y'all ready. You got your pen and your paper ready. Because I already know every single last one of y'all that got a 66 and family member that be coming for y'all for some of the things you do, you're going to want to have Bible study with them after you read this with me. You're going to take this on down there to mama. Okay? And granny's down there too. And you know, you know she's super sanctified and saved. She's telling everybody business, but grandma used to be a thing back in the day as well. You know, but you're going to take it down there to mama and you're going to read it with mama. Because you need to teach her about the Lord. Not the church. You go down there at church and old Bessie down there, she's going to talk about you before you even get out your car good. And old Dale down there, you know he's been reading with old Amira over there. He's a deacon, but he's always sneaking. And think we don't know about it. But we saw his car parked around the corner there twice last week. Talking about he's doing some community service. Yeah, I bet you are, buddy. I bet you are. <laughs> yeah, servicing. Right. What service that she need at 2 o'clock in the morning? Because Dale, he lives right around the corner from there. He gets home at 3.30. And he's seen it with his own eyes two times last week. You're not doing no service over there, Deacon. You're sneaking. <laughs> That's how I go in a trailer park. I didn't hurt it. Moving on. <laughs> Listen here. <laughs> you said circle, please. Listen. <laughs> Bro, because you already know. Go visit your family in, like, down south. Baby, any truck that comes speeding down there, they say, yeah, honey. And then let me tell you about him. You stay away from him. Here, he cheats on his wife every other night. He found him a new floozy every time he go down there to the bar. Yeah, he's going to come home with something, and I don't need money, if you know what I mean. Look. <laughs> no, I didn't need to know that, huh? I wasn't looking at him anyway. And his wife, she knows, she just tries to sneak down to the, old, you know, to the clinic down there and act like she's taking one of her friends, and she's really going for herself. Because he's been around there with Betsy twice this week. <laughs> you said he just tickled. <laughs> Bro, because he know them family members. He'd be like, I, I didn't come over here for this. And Lulu May, don't even get me started about her. 
Mamma and Lulu LeMay. <laughs> Y'all got, everybody got one. A floozy. Mm-hmm. She's a floozy. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right, come on in. Come on in. Come on in and get rid of your sins. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in and let's begin. Look, uh, listen here. Come on in and get rid of your sin. This crazy boy didn't spit his water out in my bed. Chris loves when you do the white voices. Oh, quit, Chris. That's because I sound like some of y'all long lost family members. You know when you go down there to Florida and see your mama. You know it. She's going to tell you about all those people over there living in that other trailer park. It's, it's dirty over there. We keep our trailer park clean. We have community meetings and our kids aren't bad. They're not going around here throwing and, and, and causing trouble. Those kids over there from uh, Sunset, their parents have no way they're out, but you know they have a whole bunch of methodies over there. So, you know. He says, Sal, he said, just like that too. Oh no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean it. <laughs> oh damn. Where is my fan? I'm always messing up over here. It's mama's fault. You were gonna go talk to Jed about that. Yeah, I got it from my granddaddy. <laughs> he talks like that too. He just says whatever. He lets all everything, anything fall out of his mouth. You just don't take him, don't take him into swear. Don't worry about it. Listen here, I know I had a lot of white friends and their grandmas used to crack me up. Circle, you know my husband is white, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of people in here that got white husbands and stuff. So I have to be careful sometimes because I don't want to feel my brothers and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I got to not be offensive. You said, I never heard people talk like that. Oh, shh, honey, you ain't been to the country or been around no country folks. Because literally all that is, is my family in a white voice. <laughs> that's it. That's that's not a white voice, but a, 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 co a country southern. I shouldn't say white because it's black people talking just like that. But you know what I'm saying. I shouldn't say white. But, you know, we kind of distinguish the trailer park from the ghetto fabulous because you know we got the crazy black people that like oh boy see i knew something was wrong because <laughs> anytime a little white girl run to a black man something is wrong you know we got we got them too <laughs> we got them over here yep yeah, we do you said i'm from K kentucky and i'm a country hillbilly exactly we got them over here, too. Everybody see them on TikTok. You see them over there, and you see them over there. It's the same thing. <laughs> it is the same thing. I'm trying to tell you. Thank you. Ain't no white or black, baby, because it's black folks that talk to just like that. But y'all know what I mean. Certain voices and certain things you associate with certain things and certain people. And it's just a fact. It really is. Yeah, it's a fact. So... Anyway, y'all, I am I am flashing bad today. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's the moon and the sun not doing what they supposed to be doing. I don't know. But when I tell you I have been flashing all day, <laughs> I woke up. That's why I had to go get in the shower. Like, what the? God dang. I had to turn the air on. It's ridiculous. I don't know if I'm getting closer out of pre and getting into whatever. But baby, I be about to sweat to death. And I don't know where my my church fan is. It's in here somewhere, and I just don't know. Do y'all see it on the shelf? I can't find my church fan. <laughs> I can't find my church fan. I don't know where it is. Who? Oh, where is my church fan? <laughs> A nigga is about to burn up. Do you hear me? Where is my freaking fan now? Goodness gracious. It's been fell on the floor or something somewhere. I might have took it in my room. I don't even know. Oh, God. I don't let people in my life. Ever. <laughs> I let, like, one person purposely in my life. And then, oh, here it is. Right on the Thank you. Ooh. 
Thank you. It'd be mixed in with the books. Goodness gracious. Hey, all right, let's get to it. Get your go. Go to the easy read version. Who? Go to the easy read version. Get your pen and paper out because it is time for class, honey. Late night. Look at y'all be learning in the middle of the night and stuff. I'm so proud of y'all. <laughs> Yeah, I don't give a day. If I get over here at 1 o'clock, y'all be like, do I, which book do I need? 1 or 2? Where are we reading that family? It's 3 o'clock. What if we just talking? What if we pillow talking? <laughs> what if what if we just pillow talking? We on the phone in the bed just talking. We don't, this ain't, we ain't got out of class every two minutes. These is coming from the same people that used to gym class. I know y'all skip class. You're fake. You skip class, you change your grades, maybe not all the time, and then you got the answers from your friend and want to get on here and act like you just been the scholarly student your whole life. Stop it. <laughs> Liz, you said this class better. I, what am I going to do with y'all? What am I going to do with y'all? You said no. <laughs> you didn't skip class? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Right. You said my mom didn't play. Girl, my mama didn't either. I still did it. You found ways. Quick. <laughs> you found ways. When there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> see, when you going to do all your homework, they don't, they, you know. But see, I'm grateful that I went to school at a time when there was not, not an automatic machine to tell you that your child was not in class. They didn't know until you got your report card how many class days you missed. That's when they knew. So we had time. I had nothing but time and space, honey. Nothing but time and space. My mama would pop up at the school too. I still wasn't going to be there. <laughs> and beat you down in front of the teacher. I still wasn't going to be there. Uh-huh. And what? But my mama wasn't missing no money. She had three jobs. And she wasn't about to miss no money. So you ain't leaving work. I know that. I'm about to go on and do what I got to do. <sighs> Moving on. All right. So let's get to it. I need y'all to go to the scriptural verse. No way. Y'all ready? Girl, I got the hell beat out of me. I still got welts. I got a belt buckle loop on my arm right now that probably will never go away with the little sticky thing in it. And I got that with me when I was probably 10 or 11, no, 12. About 12, 12. I still got that mark of a belt hoop on my arm right now with the little pokey thing. Cause when she hit me that last time it stuck and she was beating my ass with the buckle. <laughs> Mom, I told y'all, my mama used to take them plastic things off of here, honey. My mama did not play that. When I got to about 12, one time she with me so good, it was blood all on my couch. She said, and you better get up and get it clean. Go get that peroxide and get every bit of that blood out of that thing. You better not have no, not a stain on it. Big eyes in there scrubbing and crying. You heard me? <laughs> Trying to whip me in my wounds and clean the damn cover. You beat me. <laughs> And I start bleeding, and now I got to look, mommy dearest. Help. Please. <laughs> and then she might choke you. And my dad had a prior dance. I'm about to go like, ah, okay. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Nigga, my feet ain't even touching the ground. Get your wife. Get your damn wife. Trigger, right. Get her. She tripping. <laughs> I, that's not just, I said, look, you put me out, I'm going to leave. Don't worry about it. Either way, we ain't going to be where each other is at. I'm going to just get out here in this big old wide world and see what it got for me. Because <laughs> what I'm not about to do. Yeah. Listen. Tuh. That's why I be telling these kids, you would not be alive in my day, honey. You'd have been dead before you could have lived good if you talked to my parents like that. Stuff these kids do. 
That's why I don't be around people's kids, because you can disrespect your mama. You can't disrespect me. I don't give a damn. Unsee your cousin, whatever. I will pop your kid in the mouth and be ready for you. You let them disrespect you and talk crazy to you. I don't play that shit. And, uh, and I'm talking about my son, 27. So if you younger than him, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Because I've been a mama that long. Tuh. Baby. <laughs> That's why I just don't go around people, kids and stuff. I just don't. Because, honey, y'all be letting y'all kids talk crazy. My kids, dang near, couldn't even speak without asking first. I mean, they could, but in all reality, like, if we was out, you just not, you better, you better, what? May I please? Oh, okay, yeah, what's going on? Excuse me. They'll stand there, too. If I'm talking, they'll just stand there like this. And I look, what's up? Excuse me, mom. Can I such and such and such and such? Yes or no. Wait. And then they're gone. What? No. Ah, oh, mama. Ah, oh, no. no. <laughs> you don't see me talking. You don't get your tail out of my face. And I know I done took care of every need you have, too, before company got here or whatever. Don't play with me. Baby, I was nothing to play with, and I was young. I'm talking about snap my fingers and them niggas is out of here. I'm not trying to tell you nothing more than once. I'm not repeating myself at all. That's why I be irritated over here when I do it with whole adults. When I say no, I mean no, honey. I don't know how your mom did you. But when my mama said no, she meant no. It wasn't no maybe please. You better not even think about trying to say maybe or please. She was going to hit you in your mouth so quick. And I'm grateful for that because I have to deal with the adults over here that you could tell their parents just they felt like their parents had to give them an answer maybe i'll roll my eyes and walk away from them kids cut up if you want to you gonna regret it the hell you gonna be mad and i'm gonna be tired because <laughs> i'm about to wear yo out till i can't breathe i bet you won't do that no more I promise you, and I don't care. They was better for it, too. Too. <laughs> My heart be hurt. I be, I be feeling bad for y'all kids. They be beating y'all up and stuff. I know. That's because you didn't whip them when they was little. You listened to that old soft. I was a gorilla parent. I didn't abuse them. But, well, maybe sometimes. <laughs> it probably was a couple times I could have went too far. But, mm, it all worked out. But the fear of God in them niggas. And it wasn't the abuse that I feel like I suffered. Because I let my kids tell me what I was doing wrong. We talked about things. There were so many steps up to that. It wasn't just like, it's because I said so and none of that. No. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to help you understand. And then if you keep on cutting up, now it's mm, judgment time. My grace and mercy done ran out. I ain't got no more. Because I done talked to you, I done put you up lunch, I done took your phone, I done did this, I done did it, okay, now pain. Oh, kids understand pain, honey, I don't care what anybody says. Real life. Here we go. Matthew 11, easy read version. Come on, get on in here, get on in here, get on in here, and let me get, Tara, I forgot, that's what I came over here to do. Because this today, this right here, this right here today, this right here today, this. This, 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 this right here. We just gonna see. Where can we? Come on in, come on in. If you my friend, come on in. If you wanna quit, come on in. If you wanna quit, sit it. Come on in and see it there. Come on, look. All right, here we go. Yeah, get your shield. Do it. Yeah, come on. Here we go. Easy to read version. Bible gateway, that's where I'm at. Let's go. Come on. Ooh-wee. It says, when Jesus was finished, um, fin when Jesus finished these instructions for his 12 followers, ain't that crazy that people be wanting a whole bunch of followers? Jesus only had 12. Followers. 
Mm. Keep that in mind. Moving on. He kept his circle river small. Anyway, uh, he left there. He went to the towns in Galilee to teach the people and tell them God's message. When John was in prison, who is John to Jesus? Who is John to Jesus? His cousin. They're cousins. Yeah, they mamas is like first cousins. Right. They cousins. Okay. So this is he talking to people about his cousin. Look at that. Moving on. He said when John was in prison, he heard about the things that were happening. Things the Messiah would do. So he sent some of his followers to Jesus. Now, you know what we can equate this to? Y'all want to know what this could kind of be right now? Me and Auntie P. There are some people that started following Auntie P from over here. And there are some people from Auntie P page that came over here to WOIU. It's almost the exact same thing. You hear me? No, for real. Because John was known. And Jesus was known. But maybe not a lot of people knew how close they was. You hear me? Real life. It's almost the same type of thing. Y'all get blessed by Auntie P, you get blessed by me. Folks that came over there been getting blessed by Auntie P, and now they come over here and they get blessed by me too. You hear me? So it was almost like that. Jesus had 12 followers, and he had his followers. But when John heard, even though he was locked up <laughs> and couldn't go nowhere, he sent some of his people to go holler at Jesus like, hey, cousin, you hear me? No, you don't. She'll be all right. She, pro she probably already in here. You don't have to tell her. She's probably already in here. <laughs> she be in here, but sometimes you don't know she in here. It's cool. It's all right. That ain't for nothing. I mean, it's all right. You don't have to. I'm just saying. I'm using that as an example. A lot of people don't even know who Auntie P is. Like, with the who we call them. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes she just be wanting to come in here and have class. <laughs> just like when I be sneaking in y'all lives sometimes. I don't want y'all to know I'm in there. So I have to try to hide. But I forgot even when you on the outside, it show you on the inside. You feel what I'm saying? So just sometimes people just want to be in class and they just want to learn. It's okay. All right. Here we go. Moving on. So. <clears throat> right. Right. She be chilling. Right. You said locked up should have been a clue for you. And do. Right. Right. Did, right. <laughs> so with that, y'all, when I say uh, this is a hot flash out of this world, I do not know what is going on. You hear me? Whew. Goodness. All right. Moving on. So it's almost the same thing. John heard about the amazing things that were happening with Jesus because he was locked up in a place and couldn't really move around. So he sent some of his followers over to where Jesus was at. Okay? His cousin. He checking on his cousin. I'm going to send my folks over there. Make sure you good, cousin. I need to make sure you all right. What's going on? Y'all get me? Yeah. Is y'all following with me? Y'all got it? Y'all y'all where I'm at, right? Oh, Jesus. I should have put on a sleeveless shirt. That's probably what it is. All right, here we go. Um doo -doo -doo. all right. It says they asked, Are you the ones? Oh blah, 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 blah. okay. When John was in prison, he heard about the things that were happening, thing the things the Messiah would do. So he sent some of his followers to Jesus. They ask him, are you the one we have been expecting or should we wait for someone else? You hear me? So the followers <laughs> went to Jesus and said, are you the one we've been waiting on or is we waiting for somebody else? <laughs> I know God was like, these fools.
For real. Jesus is a brother. Y'all got to remember. Don't forget that. Okay? You hear me? Jesus is a brother. You hear me? He a brother. So imagine your cousin sending some, your cousin locked up, and we all got one. And he sent his homeboys over to your house to check on you. And they get over there and be like, this the nigga he had us come check up on? <laughs> Is you the person we looking for? Nigga, this nigga got me in the middle of the hood, nigga. Where this nigga got me in, nigga. He better be happy. I love this nigga, nigga. Because nigga, if this nigga, this nigga got me for, nigga, I'm nervous, nigga. <laughs> Jesus was always in the hood, remember? Jesus was always in the places that nobody was felt safe at that they didn't want to go. Remember? Jesus is a brother. So his cousin from jail <laughs> sent his homeboy to go check on Jesus and the nigga that he sent over there said, man, this is the nigga we looking for. John. Yeah, I'm over here. Roy, where you got me at? Nah, nigga, it's this thing. You got me on the straw, nigga. It's hoes everywhere. Not the good kind. And that's that old nigga. I think that's the nigga that broke in my car. Nigga, where you just send me to? You said, you, where is he at? Man, look, I ain't about to keep waiting. On. When is he coming? What he look like? <laughs> Man, I can't believe it. Man, this. You see they ain't answering the door. I don't know what they doing in there. It's a whole bunch of hollering and stuff going on in there, bro. I've been out here 20 minutes. Ain't nobody came to the door. Sound like they doing an exorcism or something. Nigga, where you got me at? <laughs> Jesus is a brother. I don't I don't care what you say. <laughs> uh, your cousin from jail sending somebody to come check on you? Uh-uh. Hold on. <laughs> They did have cell phones, Bree. You ain't never seen the Nokia's that the... Uh, girl. If the Bible said, say ain't nothing new under the sun, that mean everything that we got right now, they already had. But there's real Persian hieroglyphs and stuff, or whatever you call their glyphs. Okay? On the internet right now, you can see they had Nokia's. Yeah. He probably did call him. So now that make you look at the Bible differently, don't it? When it said he called him. A lot of people, and then we're going to get to this. A lot of people don't pay attention to when it say he flew. He was lifted up in the air. You know, you know, a dust storm can still be a helicopter. And they had helicopters. You got to think about all those hieroglyphs was from when, right, be, like Moses' name time. They had rocket ships, electricity, nuclear power plants. Why do you think they always in Egypt? Yo, yo, Nokia phone came from a prehistoric cell phone that they saw. They had light bulbs. Real quick, go look up an Egyptian light bulb. And some of y'all already did it, but if you knew here and haven't, go look up an Egyptian light bulb real quick and then we'll get to this because it's good. Please, please, go look up an Egyptian light bulb. They were massive and they looked just... Matter of fact, the dude came to change the light in the washroom one day. I said, I ain't seen a uh, light bulb like this in forever. And they lied, talking about old boy invented a light bulb. Lies! Lies. I don't let people on my life, huh? Lies. Don't that look just like this? Same brackets in there and everything. It's just long. 
Do y'all see it? And it's connected to a jar that has electrical wires, copper wires, and it's uh, vinegar and something else in there. Who invented the light bulb? Y'all gonna keep letting them lie to y'all. That's why they don't want you reading about Egyptian history and the reason that they show you that they was fair-skinned people so they could continue to sell their lie. But clearly, if you go to any um, library or museum and you go to that section, they show you a picture where they had a big, long thing that looked exactly like this. No, he didn't discover electricity. How? And they had a... The Dendera light bulb. No, I don't. Honestly, I don't have a good book to recommend. <laughs> I don't. Just go look up. Get, buy as many as you can. Go to the Goodwill. Find a whole bunch of them. I don't know. But ain't that crazy? So did he really? How did he invent something that was already invented? By some colored folks. You want to know why black folks, it's harder for us to patent our inventions, and they don't most times. We have to go get a person of lighter skin or fair skin and put their name on a patent, and then it'll go straight through because they know we was the original inventors of everything. I keep telling y'all, they didn't have to steal the history. They just don't let you go learn it. Same thing you saw in Egypt. It was just massive. So how did he discover electricity and create the light bulb if they had them all the way back then? Make that make sense. He didn't. He's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> they just lie right to your face. And you just let them. Because they know you're not going to go looking further than what you've already been told. So you immediately go looking for that. And you can look at it all day long in a book and still won't see it. Because they told you what to look for. That's why I ask y'all when we're reading in the OTP, don't read the heading. Just read it. Don't read all that extra so God, to, God can speak to you and you can see what, because when you do that, even in the Bible, when you do that, that's all you'll be looking for. You don't look for nothing else. And it tells you what that is saying. But if God might have more to say to you than that, so I don't be reading the headings on stuff. I just dive right in. Like even a forward of books, I don't read them. I don't want you to tell me what to think or what this is about. I want to find out on my own. So even as a kid, I'll read the forward at the end. And see if that's what I got or the introduction. I didn't I didn't read that stuff. I went right to the book and then I go back because the introduction can make it seem like it's gonna be more than what it is, just like they do with the movie, uh what you call it? They show us all these action packed parts of the movie thing on the advertisement, and then you go in the movie is sorry. I be feeling like that about books too, so that's why I just don't. I just go on and dive in and then I go back and see the trailers, right? I go back and see if Cause it don't be that. Mm -mm, you try to trick me. All right, let's go. So it says, um, "Are you the one we have been expecting, or should we wait for someone else?" And Jesus answered, "Go, tell John what you have heard and seen." <laughs> oh, thank you, Dad. Jesus came to the door. He like, what's up? They like, you, Jesus? He like, yeah, what's up? He said, John came to tell us, you know what I'm saying, what's going on. Like, we, he want to know what's up over here. He locked up. He sent us over here to see you. Jesus like, go back and tell him. I'm standing on business. I'm busy. <laughs> tell John. <laughs> mm. The blind can see. The cripple can walk. People with leprosy are healed. The deaf can hear. The dead are brought back to life. And the good news is being spread and told to the poor. <laughs> I'm busy. I ain't got time to be worried about what nobody else is teaching on their 
live because I'm just trying to make sure the folks around me is getting healed, huh? Tell them that's what I'm up to. Tell them I'm trying to help people understand my daddy way. I ain't got time to be worried about folks that ain't listening. I'm only talking to the people that want to get free. I'm only talking to the people that really want to understand. Do you hear me? She said I'm standing on business. Tell him that. They're like, all right, bro, calm down. I see. Just hold up for me. You ain't got to be all aggressive and stuff. <laughs> right? Great blessings belong to those who don't have a problem accepting me. I, I told y'all that's my daddy. Great blessings that come to people that can accept me with my stomach out fat and hard and can <laughs> with my nappy hair and all of the everything that come with me, honey. Great blessings have come to them. I'm like my daddy. I worried about what the church is doing over there. I ain't knocking the church. I ain't worried about it, but what I'm doing is being about my dad's business. And it don't look like what y'all used to. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what it's saying. Like. Y'all want to know that he my daddy? He my daddy. Hold on. Let me show you. <laughs> when John's followers left, Jesus began talking to the people about John. He said, what did you people go out to the desert to see? Someone who was weak? Like a stem of grass blowing in the wind? Really? What did you expect to see? Someone dressed in fine clothes? Of course not. People who wear fine clothes are all in king's palaces. So what was he saying about John? He said, John didn't, he ain't, what you, you who you thought you was about to see? Like, what you thought you was about to see? He don't care about wearing no Balmain, no Gucci, no... Bendy, no product. He said the folks that's doing that, they up in the church. Dressed in their fine, fine clothing. John was out in the, in the desert snatching up the people where the church people wouldn't go because they couldn't get their clothes dirty, baby. You said what? You said what? You said, huh? He said, what you thought you was going to see somebody dressed in some, um, like, you know, Gucci, in a Gucci suit with the big tie? Getting out of Bentley? Not my peoples. He said, the folks that's riding with me, we don't even ride like that. He said, you might want to go over there to the big churches and stuff where they sitting up in there looking real good. Because we about our father business. Over here, people getting healed. Over here, the dead is coming alive. Over here, people's eyes is being opened. Over here, their ears is being opened. Over here, we got miracles going. We ain't worried about trying to look like nothing. We is that. What they talking about going to come, we doing it right now. What they talking about the Holy Ghost can do is showing up over here. They look like it. We is that. Hmm. That's why they wanted to get rid of my dad. And that's why they be trying to get rid of me. Moving on. You see how they be blocking me out? They was blocking my dad out too. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Listen. He says, so what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes. John is a prophet. But I tell you, he is more than that. This scripture was written about him. Listen. I will send my messenger ahead of you. And he will prepare the way for you. The truth is that John the baptizer is greater than anyone who has ever come into this world. But even the least important person in God's kingdom is greater than John. So God said, listen. Up in heaven, the janitor, because everything in heaven is holy. The janitor is, is has a higher space than who John is. Even though he came and he laid the foundation for Jesus to come through here. He said, but in God's kingdom, even the least of the person in God's kingdom is better than John. Because there's no sin there. And John was born into sin. No matter how many great things that he did, he was still born into sin. And the things up there 
That ain't in them. You hear me? It ain't no sin in heaven. Not that, not on the places where it's peaceful. Now there are sinful beings on two and five, but it's a whole different, it's like going to the basement and you be like freaking out of the elevator, like, mm-mm, I don't want to come, Psh, come, Eric, come, come back, hey, <laughs> uh, what floor you on? Uh-uh, I'm down here in the basement, I'm going to wait on you, yeah, I want to go run this trash down there, but I'm going to, you said you'll be down here in a few minutes, what's a few? You said five. All right, I'll meet you on floor one. We can we can go on and grab them other trash buckets from back there outside, and then we can come down here together. Yeah, I'll be up there until out. <laughs> Nigga, I'm not going down here by myself. <laughs> Tempo, I'll meet you up there. I'm on my way because I ain't no. Is that light flicking? Mm mm. Clothes, nigga. Hurry up. <laughs> and you dang near be trying to stand like this so don't nobody know when they just think it's an empty elevator and be pushing a button, pushing a button like this just in case a nigga try to walk by. <laughs> it might be a killer down here. I just need entirely too many slasher movies. Uh-uh. Something about this space that don't feel right. Let me go. Let me go and fan me. Somebody's gonna come back there here with me. Mm -mm. The boiler room and all. Uh uh. Rumbling and tumbling and spouting out steam and stuff. Have you seen Freddy Krueger? Uh uh. That is not no place for nobody. <laughs> not me. Anyway. Uh uh. Not me. <laughs> you hear me? Not me. Mm-mm-mm. Cherry. Uh-uh. I can't do it. Listen. I'm trying to tell you something might be in that ceiling, girl. You go to get on the elevator. You look around and look up. <laughs> Make sure ain't no alien tail about to come down and snatch you up and splat you or not. Listen. <laughs> it be too much going on it. Mm-mm. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Listen here. I'm trying to tell you. Because y'all don't be wanting to talk about it. I'm going to say it. How did I get to know myself and not care about what people think? We'll talk about that in a minute. Long story short, I lined up with what God wanted me to do. Because I was unhappy as long as I was lining up with people. I was miserable. And God would tell me stuff. And then I would let other people tell me that ain't what God told me. God wasn't telling me that. Yeah. And then when I started listening to that still small voice, my life got better. And I didn't care because I knew what God was telling me. Because everything that he would tell me would work out. The stuff that they would tell me would cause me to be in a worse situation. And God said he wanted the best of me. That ain't it. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Come on. So it says, da, da, da. we reading in Matthew 11, y'all. Um. Mm -mm -mm. We have Matthew 11 and 12. It says, since the time John the baptizer came until now, God's kingdom has been going forward strongly. And people have been trying to take control of it by force. This is where you'll want to make a note or highlight. Who in the world could be trying to control God's word going out and being a force? Not the Romans. The Romans didn't care. The Romans did not care. No, not the Vatican either. The Jews. Who was always accusing Jesus? It wasn't the Romans. Right. Who was always who was always accusing Jesus and his followers? Who was always trying to, right, the church folks. So Jesus and his peoples was out healing the blind and healing the sick and doing all this. And the Jews, instead of them were being worried, they was trying to control who could get to Jesus and who couldn't. Remember? Remember? They was trying to control because prior to Jesus coming, 
they could control who would save them, who wouldn't save. You mean like now? And was washing hands with folks and, you know, washing folks' backs and robbing people and having, um, you know, intercourse with the, with the, with the temple people and stuff. Remember? That was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Because they were the, the priests at that time. They were the holy leaders. The church folks. We call the Pharisees and the Sadducees over here the church folks. Okay? They used to watch him closely and did. People be all in Jesus' business and he'd be worried about his own business and they'd be worried about his business. I know it, Dad. I get it. You hear me? Do you hear me? Okay, moving on. Before John came, the law of Moses and all the prophets told you about the things that would happen. And if you believe what they said, then John is Elijah. Do y'all see how crazy my daddy be talking to people? He said, if you believe what they said, then John is Elijah. And we know Elijah was already gone and taken to heaven. God ain't brought him back until he about to come back recently. He be talking good and crazy. He said, so John is Elijah then. Bro, y'all didn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. He said he... Uh, <laughs> He is the one they said will come. You people hear, who hear me, listen. He said, listen. Whoever listening, is you listening? Because I, I ain't trying to talk about what they, listen. I'm trying to tell you something. <laughs> he be talking crazy. He said, you believe what they told you? Then John is Elijah. He said, listen to what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> what can I say about the people who live today? What are they like? The people today are like children sitting in the marketplace. One group of children calls to the other group. We played flute music for you, but you did not dance. We sang a funeral song, but you were not sad. Why do I say... Um, People are like that because John, here we go. This right here, this part right here, I said, now listen, y'all got, put your ears up if you got your listening ears on. Put your ear up if you got, put an ear up if you got your listening ears on because baby right here, this. Y'all got some ears over here, y'all got your ears, y'all got your ears. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right here. Hey, listen. He said, why do I say people are like that? Because John came not eating like other people or drinking wine. And people say he has a demon inside him. The son of man came eating and drinking. And people say, look at him. He eats too much and he drinks too much wine. So John lived on a strict diet. He was vegan. And he didn't drink no alcohol. He was, you know, the old, you know, like a Rasta type person. Okay. But Jesus said, nigga, I came and got in here with y'all, be eating with y'all and drinking with y'all and everything. And now y'all say, what about me? He said, so if it ain't right, what is it then? John didn't drink, and John probably didn't eat meat and all of this. Jesus said, I'm eating what y'all eat, and I'm drinking with y'all. And y'all still not satisfied. I made myself more palatable for y'all so that y'all can understand that I lived the same existence that you did. Because... The pastors and priests is walking around acting like they so perfect because they don't do this and they do that. So I did some of the same things.
things y'all do and y'all still not happy. Ain't that crazy? So it didn't matter if the speaker didn't drink, hey, and didn't smoke. You wasn't going to listen to him anyway. You said he full of a demon. So then I came and I, I, I drink and I smoke with y'all and it's still a problem. You still get to see my humanity and you still won't listen. lived a regular life in front of y'all and you still he said just say y'all just don't want nothing cause you had a man that didn't live in excess he lived a meek and humble life he wasn't taking more than he needed he was out there chilling, eating bugs and worms and stuff, and shrubs and berries. And that still wasn't good enough for y'all. So I came, and I'm chilling with y'all. I'm eating what y'all eat. I'm drinking what y'all drink. I'm making more wine for the party. And y'all still not listening. It's still not, not real to you. Ain't that crazy? Look it. He said, why do I say people are like that? Because John came not eating like other people or drinking wine. And people say he has a demon inside him. The son of man came eating and drinking. And people say, look at him. He eats too much and drinks too much wine. He's a friend of the tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by what it does. Not how it look. Hallelujah in the house. Never gonna let these church people get me down. God called me anyway. Gone up that old highway. Hallelujah in the house. You said what? I was going to say something else, but I'm going to move on. You said what? Wisdom ain't what it look like, honey. Wisdom is what it does. I don't got to look like a Christian. I don't got to act like a Christian and I'm going to have my Jesus juice in my meds but I'm in here with y'all every day studying and helping y'all understand wisdom ain't what it look like baby because we all know what's going on with the ones that look like they would say wisdom is what it do you got all that the fine clothes in the castles, baby. But what them souls doing around you? Are they really growing? Or are they faking and shaking because they look saved? And they know how to talk like a church person. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> well, you have evidently. Mr. Sir. And you like PB and jellies. Too evidently, that's what we heard. Moving on. <laughs> you like PB and J's? Mm mm mm. <laughs> I'm just diddling around. <laughs> Moving on. So anyway, Tyree, <laughs> listen, 
Let me put my stuff on because then people might be talking crazy to me in the minute. The church people is in here. I can feel it. <laughs> Let me get my stuff on because the church people is in here. I can feel them. I can feel them. They're not happy about none of this. I can feel them looking at me. Oh, baby, you look so pretty in your birthday uh, photo shoot, India. India. Mm -hmm. Listen, I can feel them. I can feel them. I can feel them. I can feel the church people with their darts. I can feel them. Mm -mm -mm. It ain't what you look like, it's what you're doing. Oh, yeah, you did real good, baby. Yeah, you know, I took mine too, so. Ain't that crazy? Whose mind is blown? Not about the PB and J before that. God said, I drink and I eat just like y'all. Don't judge a book by its cover. Wisdom is not what it look like. And isn't that crazy? The people say, they come in here and say, your head ain't covered. You don't see all this hair on my head? You showing skin. I can see your face. And if you turned on by a wrinkly stomach, you need to check yourself. Because I'm not about to burn up in here because of you. But a million times, God say, don't be fooled by what you see. You better try the spirit by the spirit. Because energy don't lie. And if I had a turban on or some type of hijab, if my head was shaved, you wouldn't know anyway. So then what is you talking about? Get out of my way. Why would God say a woman's hair is her glory? And why did they shave women's heads that were found in fornication and different things then? <laughs> Don't judge me by how I look. Judge me by what I've been doing, doing, doing. <laughs> what? So there's this lady named Circa. And she teaches online. And so then she has like all these books and stuff and she breaks down the Bible and everything. And my Titi Circa and her be talking about dinosaurs and her got a big old sword. And her said that on the second hand, if I lie to my mommy, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go and I'm going to be in that place. I'm going to be good. Hate to say it, but my words speak for themselves. I don't gotta say nothing. Every time y'all see me open a letter, <laughs> to Auntie Circa, to Aunt, to Auntie Circa. Y'all see how Auntie is spelled? I absolutely love it. To Auntie Circa, with the smiley faces on the back. To Auntie Circa. And my letter was in here. This the handmade envelope from my baby, honey. To Auntie Circa. To Auntie Circa. To, Aunt, to Auntie Circa. <laughs> uh, we love your teaching. Happy birthday from your Circa Littles. Eight years old and ten years old they was two years ago. So now they what? Ten and twelve? My little niece 
Jesus was 79 when they came, or they 79 now, and they want Bibles. They own because they don't want to share with their mama. It, it don't matter if I look like what you think I should look like. And it don't matter if I act like what you think I should act like. Because the proof is in the pudding that babies and old people and everybody in between, their lives is changing. Black, white, Spanish, it don't matter. Their lives is changing, honey. Australian, Canadian, Japanese, Chinese, dirty, neat. No, I'm just playing. Moving on. Uh, yeah. Folks is not being um garden tools anymore. Or garden tool workers. Folks can quit having sticky fingers like octopuses picking up stuff that don't belong to them. Everything in between. There's people that used to have so many prescriptions that they couldn't move around. And now they don't even take two pills a day. There are people that didn't understand why they kept struggling and never had any extra and didn't realize it's because they was, wasn't giving to the people. They wasn't giving their 10% away, not to just here, but it period. And now they got savings accounts and now they're not getting disconnect notices every month. They getting raises on their job by just studying and looking out for the homeless person on the corner. And giving five dollars away to the lady on the street. They ain't had to get no million dollar offering and jump around on one leg. All they had to do was sit and read and ask God to change the things in them that were not agreeing with what he saw for their life and their life immediately start to change. We have people that went back to their husbands and wives because they read. People that have been separated for a long time and realized they was in the wrong and they went back and they got back with their spouses and life is better. The $5 challenge. You remember, Naisha? <laughs> I love it. It was the $5 challenge that got y'all hooked. You didn't even know. Five is grace. It was a specific number I wanted y'all to sew. For the new people, just in case y'all don't know. Oh, folks, did you do the $5 challenge and did you get a blessing after? And then new people, if y'all want to know what the $5 challenge is, the $5 challenge is you have to take $5 and give it away to a complete stranger, somebody you don't even know. Did you get an instant turnaround? <laughs> Our $5. Folks, it was the white cloth. Oh, it was the white cloth for you? Okay. Uh-uh. You got $300 right back after someone only $5. I told y'all, my daddy don't need much. My daddy, you still waiting? Uh-uh. <laughs> no, nah, it come right back. Oh my God, yep. Gave 10 and woke up to two grand. Come on, and two. I don't know. Maybe you didn't give her with the right intention. What was your thought when you gave it away? Because normally, sometimes you can't even get home for it, get, got given back. I never told until I came here and been getting blessed. It, come on. I'm trying to tell you. I did the $5 challenge, um, did 11. Um, was all the money I had and got a whole job. Come on, Jazzy Mae. It was the shape challenge for you. Okay. Okay. You wasn't on a hundred dollars. I'm trying to tell y'all. <laughs> Listen, that's why people like you just give stuff away and do because you can't be God given. You forget that scripture why you want to be stingy. The more I give, the more he give. Crazy. But you gotta give to a place that's actually going to put it back out and then it multiplies. You can't keep pouring into, I hate to say it, a lot of these churches is trash cans because don't nobody else benefit from the money that go in them collection plates. The church benefits, but not the people of the church. Ain't no free dinners. You got to pay for pastor's dinner. Ain't no free parking. 
You can't get no free coffee. You dang sure can't get nothing. But when you sow into fertile ground, the girl that ain't never got no diapers, the man on the corner that can't get his life together, your cousin that just got out of jail that just need a little help, it ain't up to you to decide. You don't know what that person talked. So what? They didn't make it to 10 times. How many times you said you was going to leave your side piece and you did? How many times you said you was going to stop stealing from the store and you did? Yes, yeah, a lot of people that have to pay to park at their churches. You said it's a business for real. And yes, my nephew couldn't believe how much I gave out Saturday at the pantry. I told him I... You had to explain this to him? Yeah. Purchased a dinner for a homeless last Sunday and gave her $5 in cash. Come on now. Because <laughs> what a lot of people don't realize, a lot of times they don't mean real. It be, God will let an angel take the form of a homeless person you used to seeing. And you'll look down at some money. And then a person will come and ask you for exactly what's in your cup. And they didn't even see it. Excuse me, do you got $7.50? And you'd be like, hell no. This is my last seven dollars. How did you know how much I need? How much I <laughs> cause it don't be a real person most times. Somebody come and ask you for $20 and $20 is all you have on you right now. You think that's just a, 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 a coincidence? <laughs> really? Excuse me, you got about $15, $16 and you literally have $17 in your bag. Yes, I was driving down the road freezing outside, man, walking bare feet. I had to turn around. Come on. It be, yes, it's a, it's, it's a test. God to see if you gon' He said, because if you did it to the least of them, you did it to me. Hold up. That mean I drove past Jesus and was talking about he shouldn't be drinking and he have a place to live. That mean I drove past that lady and said if she wasn't on drugs, she wouldn't have to be out here begging for no money. So I did it to Jesus too. You said gave last $3 and got 300 a few days later. I'm trying to tell you, you cannot be my daddy giving. And he loves a cheerful giver. That's the thing. But you also have to give to fertile ground. You can't go. I'm just, Okay, so let me tell you what. Let's just talk about this. Think about taking all y'all seeds that y'all have and just laying them on the concrete. And spreading them on the counter. What they going to grow? Not, not putting no water on them or nothing. You just lay them on the concrete. You, you think they're going to grow? Boy, some water for a dollar. Gave him five and didn't want to take the water. Come on now, Audrey. Tried to give a homeless man some money and he told me to, um, he told me to have it and happy holidays. Well, wow, some of them won't take it. My coworker didn't have vacation time, so I gave her my ties and paid three. Hold on. Three and gave I gave her my ties and it paid three of her bills a month for three months. Did y'all hear that? She gave her friend her ties and for three months it paid three of her. But you don't want to. You gotta give it away anyway. And you don't want to help nobody? It won't be nothing you can't go to her and get when she get on her feet, I promise you. Nothing to be off limits. People don't forget that kind of stuff. I gave $100 to each of my coworkers. I like it that y'all doing this. Because we givers over here. That's what we do. And if you, now listen, everybody that came here was not a giver at first. New people, they was not givers. Do not let them fool y'all. They was stingy as hell, I promise you. 
But you can't stay over here and not give. Because we givers and we see the blessing in being a cheerful giver. Do you hear me? But we don't give to the big, I mean, some people do. But we give to places where we know it's actually going to be of use. That other people have access to it. So that people can be helped. Yep, I gave my friend my ties and she got on her feet and blessed me. I'm trying to take Listen, <laughs> baby girl, my hubby was stingy. He's proved circuit change. Oh, shoot. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> See, bro, I got y'all. I'll be trying to help y'all out. You ain't got to be grouchy about no change. See? And some people thought I was just another. I said, don't give it to me. Give it to somebody else. Go give it. <laughs> Our purpose is to serve others. Come on, Raquel. Yes. That is our job. And everybody wants somebody to serve them. And everybody wants somebody. What, what was service you didn't put in? How you help somebody else like, but you are always begging Jesus for something. But stingy as hell and won't help nobody that's in a lower situation than you. You will help people that don't need it before you help people that do. That ain't new either. People always want to give to the rich people, but you don't never want to give none to the poor. Stop it. They're not they're gonna mismanage it. And you don't think the rich people are gonna take your money and go on vacation and, and go buy a four thousand dollar bag that they never gonna carry. They already got enough. And they don't even want to know your damn name. Paying a thousand dollars a ticket to go. Mm -hmm. You can't even touch them. Folks got divorced over tickets. She ain't left her husband and he got all kind of stuff going on. Y'all crazy. She ain't going against her man for y'all. Why is y'all going against y'all man for her? Which one of y'all got, uh, Beyonce got some of y'all um, lawyers, y'all divorced lawyers since y'all was going at, um, you think she gonna send you some at my back or? Come on. You hear me? And it's sad to say, it's a lot of churches like that, too. I paid tithes into a church from the time I was 14 until I was about 23. Faithfully paid tithes. And when I was getting ready to get evicted out of my apartment because I was pregnant and couldn't go to work because they had me on bed rest, they made me go to all of the other places first and wait until I found some, but this is my home church. They see me every Sunday, every Tuesday. I done helped, did all the, the old ladies' hair in the church and everything. Even the assistant pastor. And she was the one that was over the money. And couldn't get no help. Still end up getting evicted. And the money that they did give me, I had to pay back. And I'm talking about, I was in collections. So my ties was good, real good. But when I got pregnant and couldn't pay my bills and was on house arrest, oh, not house arrest, oh Lord, I didn't pay on house arrest. It felt like house arrest. Uh, bed rest, because I couldn't even pick up my other kids. I couldn't get no help. And they told me, oh, we don't do that over here. We only give out loans. We don't, we don't, um, we don't give, give out, uh, we don't do, I bet y'all won't be getting my ties no more. This dude asked me for $1.50 to catch the bus. I walked in the gas station and hit a $1,000 scratch off. I know how I go. That be angels. I remember a church did that to my brother or my mother when we lived in a homeless shelter. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying, they will take all your money, but you can't get nothing from there. Nothing. And that's why we do what we do here, hon. I'm trying to tell you, 
Because I've been in that situation. I'm sending you my money and I can't get no help. I'm faithful here. I pay my tithes here every two weeks. And when I get a bonus, y'all get it. And now I'm in a tight spot and I'm supposed to just keep. And that's why when I told I told God, I said, if you ever, he told me I was going to have to teach. I said, I don't want to do it like them. And I'm not knocking nobody because not all churches are like that. There are some churches that do give and they do. But I'm saying, y'all know the ones I'm talking about. Right, you, you got to pay to bury your family. The church is supposed to be, listen, honey, I know. <laughs> y'all make enough money. Now, I can see if it's a struggling church or something, just because it's small or they have to pay for their whatever. But most of these churches be paid off. That's crazy to me. Anyway. I'll be right back. Now. Right. We tax exempt too, but we give. Faithfully. We do. It ain't been one month since we've been here that we ain't, listen. And we've been in, we 25 months now, 24 months. And God has blessed us tremendously. Sorry, y'all. Crazy, right? Thank you. The Potter's house made my aunt pay them to bury her husband, and she's been faithful. Come on. <laughs> Let's get back here. Here we've been on here eighty-three minutes. Do it seem like we've been in here an hour and a half already? That's crazy. It do go by fast. Are you serious? Congratulations. Congratulations, Naisha. God shows up and shows out. And do. Congratulations. That's a good deal. Yeah. All right. So we back right here at uh, Matthew 11 and 24. I mean 20. Real quick. Wow. Wow. Good night, y'all. Go to work in the morning. Okay, good night. Here we go. It says, then Jesus criticized the cities where he did most of his miracles. He criticized these cities because the people there did not change their lives 
and stop sinning. Now, I think it's in Josephus, but I know that it's in one of these other lost books. I can't remember. But do y'all know that it says, and I can't remember which one I have to find it. It says that the reason those three cities that, uh, um, the reason God cursed those three, three cities too is because the Antichrist is going to be, I think it's in the sibling oracles. I can't really remember where it's at. But he's going to be conceived in one of these cities. He's going to be reared in one of these cities. And he's, he's going to be conceived, born, and then reared in one of these cities. All three of these cities. Right? Jesus knew. The, and so then, let me tell you, I did the research on this. And it's only a few miles away from where Jesus was born. Ain't that crazy? Where this Antichrist is supposed to come from. You remember we did do this in class. We did. That's why I said it's in like the sibling oracles. I can't remember where it's at. Okay? Now. Yeah, right. And nothing still grows in two of these cities, if I'm not mistaken, today. I think Chor is in... Nothing still grows there. It's one of these cities like nothing still grows there. It should if y'all went and watched uh the 25 messianic prophecies, I think they went to that place. Okay? I I think they went to that place. And it's it's like Sodom. It's not no, it's nothing, nothing grows there still. They did in that in the thing, it's barren land. So we about to read about those three cities now. I don't know if y'all knew this was right in here, but it is. Okay? Now do me a favor. Go look up where Chorazin or Chorazin is. C-H-O-R-A-Z-I-N. They spell it a few different ways. Raised. That's where he was raised at. He was conceived in one city, raised in one city, and born in one city. Yes. Where is it? Upper Galilee. Upper Galilee. Where did they find old boy yet? The Messiah that the Jews find, where, where, where did it say where they found him at or whatever? Or where he showed up at? Thank you, Diana. Where they find the Messiah at a couple, a couple years ago? Y'all know what city or anything did it talk about? What city? They found him in the desert. I, I just want to know what they said about where they found him at. Yeah. Yeah. They said just in the desert. They didn't say where near where it was from. You don't think they said a place? We might have to dig a little deeper. Come on, y'all, go look. And I ain't rushing, y'all. This this is what I was saying. Get your paper, cause we. Did they say? They said he came out of nowhere. And they didn't say where they found him. They didn't say, like, what part? Just some part in Israel. 
Huh. Maybe we should take a deeper look into where they found him at. If it was by Chorazin, Bethsaida, or Capernaum, any of them cities. Hold on one second. Give me one second, y'all. I'm going to have to look for it at another time because I can't remember exactly which book it's in. But one of these books, it talks about the Antichrist and how uh, the, the reason that those cities are cursed is because the Antichrist is going to come out of him. He was one of them he was conceived in, one of them he was born in. And I don't know if it's in here, Josephus. I can't even remember where I read it at. And I wouldn't even know where to start looking at it in my notes. I can't remember which book. I'll have to find it. But basically, they said he came out of nowhere and has full understanding of the Torah from the beginning to the end. Mm, okay. Oh, uh, Lord, well, he had, he had tell me where it is here in a minute. If we supposed to read it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway, moving on. All right, they said he came out of nowhere, so we sticking with that. They found him walking in the desert. All right. So it says, Jesus said, um, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. He criticized these cities because the people there did not change their lives and stop sinning. Jesus said, it will be bad for you, Chorazin or Chorazin. It will be bad for you, Bethsaida. I did many miracles in you. If these same miracles had happened in Tyre or Sidon, and we know what they was doing in Tyre or Sidon, don't we? Right? Right? What was going on in Tyree? First of all, they said Lucifer was in Tyree. And Sidon, we know that was the angels. That was the, the angels and the children was living over there. We still in Matthew 11. We ain't went nowhere. What's Revelations 19 and 19 and 21? Y'all yeah, post the scripture because I'm not gonna go and read that. What is it? I don't I don't know. Is that the answer I'm looking for or what? I don't know what is that I don't know. I read until I told you I just can't even remember where I was just reading. What is it? You gotta post the scripture, babe. <laughs> okay, thank you. I read entirely too many books to memorize where it is. 
Mm-hmm. And I done read stuff in several different versions. I ain't even gonna hold you. It ain't even gonna lie to you. Especially now with what goes on in here now. <laughs> Used to be able to find all my stuff. Ain't find nothing. Hey, so we gonna go on. All right. So it says, D -d -d -d. it says the people there would have changed their lives a long time ago. They they would have worn sackcloth and put ashes on themselves to show that they were sorry for their sins. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be worse for you than for Tyre and Sidon, and you, Capernaum. Will you be lifted up to heaven? No. You will be thrown down to the place of death. I did many miracles in you. If these same miracles had happened in Sodom, the people there would have stopped sinning, and it would still be a city today. But I tell you, it'll be worse for you in the day of judgment than for Sodom. Okay. Y'all, please stop just po posting the scriptures. I, I don't know why y'all do that. I just said that. I don't know if he was here for it, bingo. Post the scripture. I, I know it talks about it in other places. I'm just saying, post the scripture. <laughs> That's what I need y'all to do. I'm not going to go looking for it. I need y'all to post the scripture. So if, if you're trying to tell me what's going on, you got to post the scripture, not the number of the scripture. Thank you. Anyway, so like I was saying, <laughs> they didn't found this Antichrist, and they probably don't want to tell nobody because the real people know where they said they was going, where he was going to be born, where he was going to be raised, and where he was going to be real. But but they're all desolate places. If I'm not mistaken, most of the places are desolate. Ain't nobody around over there. And where do they do all of the satanic rituals and stuff? Don't it be out in the wilderness where ain't nobody here in the woods or way out in the desert on the top of the mountain where they think nobody can't see them? And then this kid just come out of nowhere. I'm trying to tell you. Do you hear me? <laughs> they probably don't want to tell because people that, that's looking for him and that have read the things that we read, they know what to look for. Because their eyes is open. <sighs> Who? Where, Miss Patsy? Who was born? Y'all gotta be more specific. I don't be know. Where was he born? Focus. Eretz Israel. That's where it says he was born. Miss Patsy, you on it. Let's look it up. Thank you.
Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. I was trying to see. And the name just means land or country. Eric's. I wanted to see what it meant and see what it used to be called back in the day. You see what I'm saying? Because they be I told y'all they be changing the names and stuff. It used to be a part of Palestine. That's what I was looking for. I'm like, where? 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 And do we even know that he was really born there? They can say whatever they want to say, but he was found out in the in the in the way. <sighs> Well, let's get going. Thank you, Auntie Patsy. He was born in the country or the lands. In the country. What? Out in the... Mm. Okay. Moving on. All right, we almost done, y'all. We got a little bit to go. In the sticks, right? Out down yonder. Oh, hey. Hello. So it says, Dear Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. I am thankful that you have hidden these things from those who are so wise and so smart. so smart she's stupid they got so much wisdom and they never asked when Eve died they will slap you in the head with a King James version Bible and can spout out every single scripture that you can think of but they don't even understand them and so the true word is is hidden from them in a lot of ways. They've looked at those Bibles for tens of twenties of thirty to forty years and never once thought to question why didn't it say that Eve didn't die? Where can I find that information? This in the first six chapters. You hear me? You got all these accolades of biblical scholar and all of this behind your name and you can't tell nobody when Eve died and it's right in the library. Who feels like the rest of the Bible is hidden from the 66ers? They so wise and they so, so smart and yet God hid the rest of the Bible right there from them when they carry it every day. He hid the mysteries right in front of them. They can read about the book of Jasher, but won't go look it up. They can read about the book of the War of the Lords, uh, the War of the Lord, won't go look it up. They can type in uh, Omnisophorus. And, and, and see he went and met Paul and all this, they'll read about that. But if they really go study Lyconium and all of that, then the book of Paul and Thecla pops up. 
But they've been told not to look at it, so they don't. God didn't tell them don't look at it. Man told them don't look at it. Right? Or wrong? Do we have any new people here? Anybody new? I do this a lot because I be wanting y'all to understand. <clears throat> Anybody? Anybody new? No. They're like, I'm not about to tell you. Fine. If you go to Genesis, the fifth chapter, and I believe the fourth verse, and you look in your Bible, it's going to tell you that Adam died. It's going to tell you that he had more children. Okay? He's gonna. It's going to tell you that other than Cain, Abel, and Seth, that he had other sons and daughters. It's going to tell you that he lived so many years and had this son, and then he lived this many years after that, and he died at 930. It never says anything else about Eve. After she sinned in the garden, there's absolutely nothing else in the Bible about Eve or Adam. And they lived for almost 1,000 years. Okay? That's important. Don't you think? Did anybody go get their Bible to look and see? See if I'm telling you the truth. Five and four. What did do we say? Do we say when Eve died or do we just tell you about Adam? After Eve gave him the fruit, you, you don't hear nothing else about her in your KJV. You don't think that's important? They don't even tell you when she died in the KJV. That's right in the first five chapters. So you mean the rest of it is all right? No, it don't say nothing about Eve. It show sure don't cover. But you know what book does say something about Eve? And I don't know where it is. So I ain't even about to try to look for it. It's squeezed in between one of these other books. The book of Jasher. And the book of the Jubilees. They talk about Eve all the time. The Jubilees for sure. Nope. I'm asking y'all grandmas and stuff. You never asked what happened to her, did you? Look at people like, damn, I never even thought about that. It's a, it ain't in there, baby. Look. She ain't lying. It ain't in there. Mm -mm. It's called Little Genesis for the daughters of Adam and Eve. It is. 
did. Oh, no. She is the one that messed everything up. And most women are deceived by seductive men. There's plenty of men that seduce silly women all day long. Ain't nothing changed. Her granddaughters is still doing the same stupid stuff. It's silly women on this planet right now. That then lost their lives, lost their children, lost their careers and everything. She only mentioned in the Bible four times. Thank you, Elaine. Ain't that crazy? The mother of all of us. And you don't think I had nothing else to say about her at all? Really? Well, I understand. Crazy, right? I need y'all to go to pack, get your book too. I need y'all to go to book two. And go to page uh, 58, 59. Book two, page 59. Man, I left my name of grandpa's list in here. See that at the top? You see that? This is the book of Jubilees. You see it? What book is what? The book of the Jubilees. Book two. Here we go. And the Lord said to us, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make for him a helper who is like him. And the Lord our God cast a deep sleep upon him, and he slept. And he took one bone from the midst of his bones for the woman. And that rib was the origin of the woman from the midst of his bones. And he built up the flesh in place of it, and he constructed a woman. And he awakened Adam from his sleep, and when he awoke, he stood up on the sixth day. And he brought her to him, and he knew her, and said to her, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called my wife because she was taken from her husband. Therefore, a man and woman shall be one. And therefore, it shall be that a man will leave his father and his mother and will join. Uh, he will join with his wife and they will become one flesh. In the first week, Adam was created and also the real of his wife. And in the second week, he showed her to him. And therefore, the commandment was given to observe seven days for a male, but for a female, twice seven days in their impurity. And after 40 days were completed for Adam in the land where he was created, we brought him into the Garden of Eden so that he might work it and guard it. And on the eighth day, his wife was also brought in. And after this, she entered the Garden of Eden. And therefore, the command was written in the heavenly tablets, for one who bears, if she bears a male, she shall remain seven days in the in her uh, in her impurity like the first seven days. In thirty three days she shall remain in the blood of her purity. And she shall not touch anything holy, and she shall not enter the sanctuary until she has completed these days which are in accord with the rule for a male child, 
and that which is in accord with the rule for a female is two weeks, like the two the two first weeks in her impurity. And sixty six days she shall remain in her blood of purity, and their total shall be eighty days. And when she has finished those eighty days, we brought her into the garden of Eden because it was more um, holy than any land, and every tree which is planted it is in it is holy. Therefore, the ordinances of these days were ordained for any who bears a male or a female that she might not touch anything holy. She might not enter the sanctuary until these days are completed for a male or a female. This is the law and testimony which was which is written for Israel so that they might keep it always. And during the first week of the first jubilee, how long is the jubilee? How long is the Jubilee? Fifty years. So in the first week of the first 50 years that Adam and Eve was after, it was the first week in the first 50 years of creation. After he said, let there be light, and everybody was, and all of that, this is the first week in the first 50 years. Hmm. Let's see what he's saying. It says, uh, Adam and his wife had been in the Garden of Eden for seven years, tilling and guarding it. And we, we gave him work. And we were teaching him to do everything which was appropriate for tilling. And he was tilling and he was naked. But he neither knew it nor was he ashamed. And he was guarding the garden from the birds and the beasts and cattle and gathering his fruit and eating. And he used to set aside the rest for himself and his wife. And what was being guarded is set aside. And at the end of seven years, which he had completed there, seven years exactly, in the second month, on the 17th day, the serpent came and drew near. So I'm thinking that a week of years is seven years. Because they say 70 weeks of years. But again, God's time is not our time. That's crazy if seven years is a week. Moving on. <laughs> Page 60. He said to the woman, and the serpent said to the uh and the serpent said to the woman, The Lord commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from any tree which is in the garden. And she said to him, The Lord said, Eat from all of the fruit of the tree, trees which are in the garden. But the Lord said to us, You shall not, we know this part, blah, 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 blah. Where am I getting to? Okay, go down right here, y'all, because we all know that part. Go down to the end of the first Jubilee and Elda. Y'all see that on the same page? It's just down at the bottom because we all know the story, how they got kicked out. We know. Right, we all know the story. Everybody knows the story. So go on down to where it says the end of the first Jubilee. Okay. It says at the first... And on the first of the fourth month, um, Adam and his wife went out from the Garden of Eden and dwelt in the land of Elda, in the land of their creation. And Adam named his wife Eve. They had no son until the first Jubilee, but after this he knew her, and he tilled the land as he had been taught in the Garden of Eden. And in the third week, in the second Jubilee, she bore Cain. And in the fourth, she bore Abel. And in the fifth, she bore Awan, his daughter. And at the beginning of the third jubilee, Cain killed Abel because the sacrifice of Abel was accepted. But the offering of Cain was not accepted. And he killed him in the field, and his blood cried out from the earth to heaven, making accusation because he killed him. And the Lord rebuked Cain on account of, it, of Abel because he unalived him. And he made him a fugitive on the earth because of the blood of his brother. 
And he cursed him upon the earth, and therefore it is written in the heavenly tablets, Cursed is the one who strikes his fellow with malice. And all who have seen and heard shall say, So be it. And the man um, who saw and did not report it shall be cursed like him. Therefore, when we come before the Lord our God, we will make known all of the sins which occur in heaven and earth, and which are in the light or the darkness or any place. Y'all see that? Y'all heard that? Y'all got that? In our Bible, it said Cain begat and Seth begat and somebody begat. And then they had other sons and daughters. It didn't say nothing about Awan. The daughters of Adam. Okay. And Adam and his wife were mourning four weeks of years on account of Abel. And in the fourth year of the fifth week, they rejoiced. And Adam again knew his wife, and she bore a son for him. And he named him Seth because he said, The Lord has raised up another seed for us upon the earth in place of Abel because Cain unalived him. And in the sixth week, he begot Azura, his daughter. And Cain took his sister Awan as a wife, and she bore for him Enoch at the end of the fourth jubilee. So at the 200th year mark, Cain married his sister Aswan right in about 200 years after Adam and Eve had been kicked out of the garden. Don't let them pastors lie and say it was other people. It's not the truth. It was only two people on the planet. 200 years? Wouldn't you be grown in 200 years? Baby, it's in the fourth jubilee, it's been 50 years, 50 years, 50 years, 50 years. That's why how God counts time in 50-year increments. So when it say at the end of the fourth jubilee, that means it's been 200 years. And every time she had a baby, you're not like Irish twins or twins. It was either Irish twins or twins. So she was popping babies left and right, but you didn't marry the sister that was born in the same little Irish twin time as you. You either married up or you married down. If they were still born in your little 12-month year period, you didn't marry them. You married the one for the older sister or the older brother. And don't say it because it's chicks that have a baby every year for 20 years. I got them in my family. They've been pregnant every year for the last 20 years. And they got about 17 kids, 14 kids. It's not a game. So don't act like it can't happen. You said, that's my mom's side. Yep. Okay. So what y'all think the first wife, the first one mama was doing? You said, I'll be reading the Adam and Eve story again tomorrow. Yeah, yes, my cousin has 16 kids. Exactly. So it still can happen now. Y'all told y'all how many my grandfather had, 48 to 50 children or 52. They still ain't, and they still finding more kids. And he been dead since 2006 or 8. 2008. And they still finding kids. He was a truck driver. From the south. Big old black man. <laughs> drive backwards as a matter of fact. He didn't even drive forward when he was in town. He drove backwards everywhere. And that is not a joke. Okay. Still a thing. They're still finding children. I'm serious. And he been gone since 2000. I'm serious. I'm not joking. My mom has like 48 brothers and sisters. He had like 13 with my grandma or something, like nine with my grandma. Then he went and had something like 12 or something with this. He had babies everywhere. I said, Papa was Boko sticking with me. When he died, his girlfriend was like younger than me, I think, or right, barely older than me. 
I said, Grandpa, what you doing with her? He said, well, why do you think she over here? Last time, I said, uh-uh, I heard your, grandfather, your girlfriend is 32. He said, and, and I'm going to make babies to the day I die. I said, uh-uh, this is not the kind of information I need to be hearing. Sir. Sir. And he was like 60 or 70. And she was like 26 or something. 32. She wasn't, she wasn't that old. <laughs> Nigga, you ain't just, you gonna... How he died on top of me. <laughs> That's all I could imagine with him. How he died. He died on top of me. <laughs> like, nigga, he leaving this. You hear me? Now, listen here. Something was going on. He might have been uh like the uh like they said that the um the giants and the angels was in the book of Lamech. It says they was hung like the animals of the field. I think he might have been something working with something like that. That's what I think. <laughs> Y'all yeah, seen it in the book of Lamech. Neymar was at them, boy. <laughs> she said, nigga, have you seen them? And now we know where the thing hung like a horse come from. We understand. Now what we know. And now we know that's not a good thing. We used to think it was a good thing. Now we understand that it's bad. Shrimp guys, y'all looking better and better around here. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. God, I'm going to have to forgive for that one because moving on. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's a real thing. I'm not joking. This is really in the book. The book of Lamech of Cain. You can read it for yourself. We know what not to do. Right, Lauren? We learning what not to do. See, we didn't even know it was a sin. God, God, God thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you for forgiveness for sins that I committed. Knowingly and unknowingly. You said leave well, not to your own understanding. Girl, listen here. Well, who would have known? Mm -mm. I believe it. I didn't see them in, in real life. I didn't. Never mind. Moving on. Huh? Just read that before class. Name my wow. Yeah, she's out there bad, wasn't she? I really think. That old girl. What's her name? My mama ho. My grandma ho. What's her name? Uh, Sukihana. I think. I think. I think. They might be in that bloodline. Because if you think. I mean. She wasn't sad about it. You said, I'm trying to learn everything you know. Well, we got 900 classes on YouTube. Over 900 classes on YouTube. And they all this long. And we be pulling out book after book after book after book after highlight after highlight. So go on over there under the live tab. It's about 950. And we did that in less than two years. Because they don't care about working me like a Hebrew slave over here. They got me locked up. Won't let me out. Won't let me out. Listen here. <laughs> they works me like a slave around here. Yes, master. <laughs> they keeps the whip. They even sent me a whip to keep me in line. Make me understand what's going on around here. They hangs it on the wall over there. They hangs it on the wall. They send me weapons of... So I know <laughs> that I don't get to leave this community when I want to. Talk about a cult. No, they got me by the reins. I'm chained up. They free to do whatever they want to. <laughs> Listen. Let, don't, you can't put that. Rika, that's why I thought about it before I said it. We just got back on today, girl. <laughs> right. Right. 
they got me in trouble. Don't come over here and help me clean up and stuff. They tear up my office. And then every time they mama come and come get them, then they got to say they got to go fast because they can't help me clean up all these books they done pulled out on my shelf and all my toys and stuff. And then I got to clean up my room by myself because they don't come over here and help me clean up. Brought all these toys over here and take all my books off my shelf and then don't help me. <laughs> Sometimes I just come in here and cry. <laughs> well, good. Thank you, Rashad, because I really need help when they be... <laughs> yeah, y'all say that until y'all don't. Y'all help me have to find another shelf to build. Now say that. Y'all will do that. I be trying to help through the fall. Listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All of that. Roll your ass <laughs> good and hard. Uh-huh. Where my patch at that Uncee sent me? I guess... Every time I say that, let me see y'all. Let me show y'all what they do. They say this. Yes, you did. Look at look at them. Look at the eyes. Look at them. Yes, I'm. A yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie, for sending me that because it's gonna go right on the thing because they just beat. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah, you said, oops, time to go to bed. Right. Went to go grab the Indiana Jones whip. It's over there, Marvin. It's over there. <laughs> I told you they got weapons right here. And the whip over there. They got my swords right there. You're going to stay here. Now, we'll give you whatever you want, but you don't get to leave. I'm a pretty prisoner. Like Beyonce. Moving on. Okay, so it said right here. And Cain took his sister M1 as a wife and she bore him for him, Enoch, at the end of the fourth jubilee, at the end of 200 years. And in the first year, the first week of the fifth jubilee, buildings were constructed in the land. Huh? Buildings. So why was they talking about we only was living in, in, in huts? And we already know that Cain was already consorting with fallen angels. You hear me? We already know that he was consorting with angels because who did the fallen angels go into? The Canaanite women. The Canaanite women. Not all women at first. The Canaanite women. They went into the Canaanite women. The angels. That's the first women they went into. The demon spawn kids. Some of y'all kids might be from that line. <laughs> it's still true. Moving on. We ain't going to... Never mind. Let me just keep reading for... It be something. Where my light at? <laughs> look, look. Mm -hmm. Demon. Y'all ain't heard the word demon see. Wonder where that came from. I'm just. I, which makes everything make sense as to why they were natural enemies to the Hebrew. Uh, yeah, and the Israelites. Yep. Yep. Come on. All right. It says, And Cain built a city, and he named it with the name of his son, Enoch. 
And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she bore nine more children. And in the fifth week of the fifth jubilee, so at 250 years, Seth took Azura, his sister, as a wife. And in the fourth year of that week, she bore him Enos. He was first to call the name of the Lord upon the earth. And in the seventh jubilee, in the third week, Enos took Niom, his sister, as a wife. And she bore him a son. And um, I'm sorry. And she bore a son for him in the third year of the fifth week. And he named him Canaan. And at the end of the eighth jubilee, Canaan took for himself a wife, um, uh, Mueleth, his sister, as a wife. And she bore a son for him in the ninth jubilee, in the first week, um, in the year of that week, uh, in the third year of that week, and called him Mahaliel. And in the second week of the tenth jubilee, Mahaliel took for himself a wife, Dina, the daughter of Barakiel, the daughter of his father's brother, as a wife. So about three hundred years out or so, they didn't have to marry in the family. Hold on, I'm live. Oh, you live? I'm live. Well, go on, go on, go on, get back. Get back when you get off the line. Okay, I love you. My girl. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to have to go. There she go. Oh, 450 years, excuse me. 450 years. I, I told y'all she'd be around, don't worry. <laughs> you see? I see. Uh huh. All right, come on. <laughs> come on, I told y'all. So here we go. I'll call it back in just a moment. So it says, D -d 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 -d. okay, and she bore a son for him in the third week in the sixth year. And he called him Jared because in his days, the angels of the Lord, who were called the watchers, came down to the earth in order to teach the sons of man and perform judgment and uprightness on the earth. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? Listen. And she bore a son for him in the third week in the sixth year, and he called him Jared, because in his days, the angels of the Lord, who were called the watchers, came down to earth in order to teach the sons of man and perform judgment and uprightness on the earth. The book of Judges. I told y'all the book of Kings and the book of Judges is very important. Because before God called human judges, the angels was the judges. This is why you always see in the old movies where they got to travel up to the top of the mountain to go visit this spirit or this being and get, uh, uh, you had to take your problems up there once a year and all of that. See, they be just having you skip through and you just reading names. But when you go looking it up, you have to understand there's a Barakiel. Did y'all just read that? Barakiel was also the name of the angel that lost his L and he became Barak. As to why Barak means one who fell from heaven like lightning or the stars. See how they just slid them in there? Because once God disowned them, well, you like a regular man even though you're not. You ain't my son. But all the angels that got disowned by God, they were bastard children then. So he took the E-L and A-L off of their name. Elohim and Allah, A-L-E-L, -E the name of God. You're not mine. You don't carry my name anywhere. You just Barak. Semyaziel is now Semyaza. 
That's why they're called the bastards and the reprobates because God said, I'm not your father no more. This is why their children built the tower to fight against the gods. The rest of their uncles and their granddaddy. If you go to Genesis 6, it says the sons of God, when men began to multiply and daughters were born, so men were already multiplying for seven complete generations. In the seventh generation from Adam, okay, or the eighth generation, you know, seven complete, so the eighth generation, whatever you look at that, the angel said, I'm about to make her my girlfriend. I'm about to make her my wife. And even Genesis says this. It says the sons of God, okay, saw that the daughters of men, now it says when men began to multiply and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, so that's letting you know men already been multiplying with regular women. And some other guys came on the scene right in Genesis. Sons of men and sons of God are two different things. And it said it took from wives all they chose. And then Nephilim was on the earth. They were the mighty men of renown and the mighty men of old, the warriors, the conquerors, the kings. That's why kings is so important. Judges is so important. But you just skip over that. No, don't. <laughs> no, don't. Right. Here we go. And in the 11th Jubilee, Jared took for himself a wife, and her name was Baraka. Hmm. The daughter of Razuel, or Razuel, the daughter of his father's brother as a wife in the fourth week of that Jubilee. And she bore a son for him in the fifth week in the fourth year of, that, of the Jubilee and called him Enoch. This one was the first who learned writing and knowledge and wisdom from among the sons of men, from among those who are born upon earth. And who wrote in a book the signs of heaven according to the order of their months. So that the sons of men might know the appointed times of years according to their order. With respect to each of their months. This was the one who first wrote a testimony and testified to the children of men throughout the uh, ch uh, generations of earth. And their weeks uh, according to the jubilee jubilees he recounted. And the days of the years he made known. And the months he set in order, and the Sabbaths of the years he recounted, just as we made it known to him. We is the angels and God. That's why they keep saying we. And he saw what was and what will be in a vision of his sleep as it will among uh, as it will happen among the children of men in their generations until the day of judgment. He saw and knew everything and wrote his testimony and deposited the testimony upon the earth against all the children of men and their generations. And in the 12th Jubilee, in its seventh week, he took for himself a wife, and her name was Edna, or Edna, the daughter of Daniel, his father's brother as a wife. And in the sixth year of this week, she bore a son for him, and he calls him Methuselah. And he was therefore with the angels of God six jubilees of years, and they showed him everything which is on earth and in the heavens. The dominion of the sun, and he wrote everything and bore witness to the watchers, the ones who sinned with the daughters of men, because they began to mingle themselves with the daughters of men so that they might be polluted. The sons of God? Mingled themselves with the daughters of men? Like it says in Genesis 6. They used to be the judges. They used to be the protectors of the people. But they said, I, I, I want to live like a human. I want to have me a wife. I think I'm going to have me some kids and stuff. God... I mean, look how happy they look. Oh, it's a little baby. I think I'm having one. So they got together and knew that they were going to be disowned by God if they did this. They knew that they were cursed. 
the moment they touched a woman intimately because they are spiritual beings and they was never supposed to be bothered with earthly stuff. They were literally made out of the cosmos, the same thing that the stars and the moon and the solar systems, they was made out of that. We was made out of the dirt of the earth. That's why we go back to it. And they kind of showed you in the movie Noah from 2014 and 2012, whatever movie, time that with Russell Crowe, when, when they killed the rock giants, then they spirit and they said, God, forgive me and please accept my, my soul or whatever they were showing you because they was trapped down here in the rocks. In Dudael and other places. That's funny. Because ain't the titans trapped in rocks? And we always have a thing about these rocks getting up. And when they get up, it's a full person. The rocks start to move and a person come out of them. You mean like on Moana? They lay down sleeping the sleeping giants, but they gonna get up when the mountains make a sound, when the rocks cry out. When they're reanimated. And wake up from a long, long sleep. Because it talks about how some of them were bound with these ropes where they couldn't move. And we always see pictures of the giants bound to where they can't turn left or right. In the old folklore tales and stuff when little people came and got them, right? They're all petrified, trapped in rocks. But their spirits is still alive. And they have to go by their bodies. Right? That's why they want you to worship. And call the energy from them. Because they are the rocks. The Titans, they were massive. They were 450 feet tall. You imagine how much a body got away to be 450 feet tall. That's half of the World Trade Center. So if two of them stood on they, on their shoulders, they could be taller. Or right at the height of the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. If they stood, you know how we had somebody stand on our shoulders like the cheerleaders? If two of them stood up like that, they was as tall as that building. About a thousand feet in the air, about 900. So, now you understand why there had to be so much water. And they had the ability to fly. We know this. So then the water came up and it was hot. And then it came down. Because, you know, the ones that was flying, they thought they was good. And God said, oh, I got a thing for you. Try this tsunami weather and see how that worked out for you see see how good you could fly in that we just read about the watchers didn't we let's go back real quick before i show you this it says right here in the jubilees on page 62 it said and she bore for him a son in the third week uh, in the sixth year, and he called him Jared because in his days the angels of the Lord, who were called the Watchers, came down to the earth in order to teach the sons of men and perform judgment and uprightness on the earth. So we know that the Watchers are the sons of God, the angels. Yes. The Watchers, the Nephilim, and the Biblical Cosmic War of the Seed. The Biblical Cosmic War of the Seed is it was seven complete generations before the Nephilim showed up. And because the angels knew that God favored men over all of his creations, what did they do? They created their own race 
And those are other people that you always see going against Israel right now. This is their children. Because Palestine used to be the Philistines. And Syria used to be Assyria from the Bible. The Assyrians. And if you go on and you go back and you look, you'll see ain't, ain't nothing changed. You said they flew dead when the watchers, when giants was on the earth. Oh, and there was animal beings with human-like heads and stuff that was the rulers. You mean like in the book of Kings and the book of Judges? Now y'all understand why I said you need to go and read Kings and Judges because the kings and the judges, the, the kings end up being the judges' children. And the first judges were not people. The first judges were were the watchers, the angels that God sent down to make sure that the, everybody was doing what they're supposed to do. This is why the book of Kings is so very important in the book of Judges and to break down all the people that the names in Genesis. That's how when people be saying they read it, I'll be like, how did you get through Genesis before six years? For real? Because the first six chapters, if you do it right, baby, it'll have you messed up for a good five years trying to study everything in there. The lines that came through all of them. And when you go look up the people that they made, and then they made, and then they made, and then they made. It doesn't take you two years to get just through the who begat who. Again, now you understand why Barak will in that Bible. Because then they just start saying it was the brother of such and such, but we don't know where they came from. And the Bible says, you never know when you entertain an angel, which means they can look exactly like us and say, oh, I'm your cousin from far away. They can eat like us. Well, look like it. These fallen angels were never supposed to eat. But they can't. They did. They were never supposed to taste earthly things. But this is where insatiableness came from. Because when they went, they were never supposed to eat or drink or thirst or nothing. So when they put their seed down into human flesh, this is why the giant's appetites for everything was insatiable. Intimacy, food, greed. They drank blood. They did all of them. Nothing was ever enough. They were gluttonous because it's like a rabbit dog when you put something to... And see, they were trying to do what God did, was going to do. Well, technically, God had already did it because he took his spirit and put it down into dirt and made flesh. So they were still trying to copy their daddy one. But they was also trying to get to what Jesus... What was going to happen with Jesus was that spirit and, and natural birth they was trying to get to it before Jesus came and say they was the gods and the creators of everything even though it had already been seven complete generations of humans prior to them doing what they did a lot of people don't know that the giants is why the earth had to be flooded and the fallen angels is why the earth had to be flooded not just the regular people the giants And these women use their children as, uh, y'all see what happened? They was bitter baby mamas. They was bitter baby mamas. It was blue people, bird people, real black people, light-skinned albino folks. Mm. Why is she only as tall as his knees and why is she standing on his feet? It's right in your face. I don't know no grown woman. She got breast and infant. I don't know no grown woman that only come up to the knees of her man and she's standing on her feet or her son. Do you? 
Y'all think this was just a coincidence? He got on a ruler skirt. He, that's definitely like a pharaoh type skirt or king skirt or royalty skirt. But she's standing on his feet. And without the headdress on, the top of her head. No, this ain't dwarfism. She was a regular sized woman, girl. She was a regular sized woman. Uh, again, the giants, the original giants, the original titans were 450 feet tall, some of them. This is not dwarfism, baby. Right. The Bible says the men in Canaan, it says we look like grasshoppers to them and they see us as such when they sent the spies over there. They see us as grasshoppers, and we see them as such. How the heck, if we look like grasshoppers to these people, that is a human person right there. That's three human men. One, two, three. Those are human men on horses. Right there, that guy's on a horse. You see it right there? You see, they're walking. These guys climbed all the way up. There's three size people. I say this all the time. Little bitty people, medium sized people, and very big people. There's a man size right there. They only as big as his head. Do you see that? And then there's this guy. These are human men right here. And they look like grasshoppers to them. God forbid they stand up. Even to this size person right here. Titans, giants, and smaller cells, lesser cells. Come on. Come on. They still look like... Now, ain't this what they showed us in Percy Jackson? When Percy Jackson got up to Mount Olympus? And we all know that all Greek and Roman mythology is built on the Assyrian and Babylonian and Egyptian kings. All Greek mythology is based on the Assyrians and the Babylonians. Wonder why they were so big. Now you understand why Israel used to be scared to fight. I was watching a piece of something on TikTok and they said that they found Noah's bones and his burial and he was 15 feet tall. And his wife was too. And he had superpowers. His eyes was just like Cyclops from X-Men. Isn't that cool? Yeah, X-ray eyes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Noah had, yes, he was born albino. Methuselah. And Lamech, they were scared of him. Well, La Methuselah wasn't. Lamech was scared of him. He said, I think my wife cheated on me with an angel. <laughs> Enoch said, boy, that is your baby. Get out of here. That's your child. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, Grandpa. I don't think that's my baby. I, don't, I think she cheated on me with an angel. And Enoch told him, boy, that is your baby. God already prophesied him. <laughs> he took off running because when his baby opened his eyes, it, little, it said when Noah opened his eyes, it was enough light brighter than the sun. And the first time I read that, I said, now, why, why would they put that in here? But then I thought about it. If you're going to be in a tsunami and a hurricane 
and all of the work of typhoon all mixed together, you ain't going to be able to see. And this is why boats had that light so that they can see. But God, oh my God, God already knew. So he put that power in Noah's eyes. Mind you, it was demigods at this time. It was demigods at this time because the angels had went into the women. And they also went into the animals. The animals of the field, the birds of the air, the fish, and the reptiles. This is why you'll see in all history, they had gods that was half human, half a uh, uh, crocodile, alligator, uh, 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 what you call it? Uh, this. And I'm not about to go all the way in there. But I hope y'all getting this and what we've been seeing. The, the, the Codex of Extinct Animals. Extinct Animals. Well, in order to be extinct, you gotta be alive. Let's do it. Boom. You mean these guys? These guys. These guys? These guys. <laughs> oh, these guys too. That's a human head if I ever seen one. So when Enoch says, and even your Bible says that all flesh had corrupted itself, this is what it meant. That's why, and people are like, what the animals do? This. What is a harpy? I know some chicks is wearing their hair like that right now. Ain't this y'all goddess from Egypt? What's her name? She was a harpy too. What's her name? Isis. Isis was a harpy, and if all Greek mythology is based on Assyrian and Babylonian kings, the harpies that we see flying in Greek mythology is the same harpy that y'all be Isis was uh, one of these folks right here. And so y'all be worshiping the reprobates and the bastards' children, the fallen angels' children. This book is called The Resurrectionist. The Resurrectionist, Rihanna's tattoo. Mm -hmm. It's called The Resurrectionist. This book is. So when you be talking about you praying to your ancestors and it ain't the Lord, like God himself, like the creator of everything, you're praying to the bastard and reprobate children. And they were viewed as gods, but God also called them the reprobates. And that's why the earth had to be destroyed. You want to worship somebody that the earth had to be like completely destroyed for? Really? You want to call yourself a god? The same thing that they did as to why he about to burn this bad baby. This time he ain't even sending no water. He said that was my grace and mercy drowning y'all. He said this time I, I'm just going to go on and purify everything. Because I left a little bit of the seed and the evil still stayed in their heart. As a matter of fact, they got worse. Water and fire. Same thing electricity is made out of. I'll be right back. I got to go to the restroom. So when you go and you see the watchers and the judges and the kings, you need to pay attention to their names.
Now you know why it says that uh, Abraham's granddaughter married uh, Hercules. And you can find that in this book. The history and antiquity of the Jews tells you that Abraham's granddaughter married uh, see I don't know I ain't got in this one yet just gonna have to go get my old one until I learn where it's at in that one this is the antiquities of the Jews see that the antiquities of the Jews, the history of the Jews. Hercules. I'm about to show you. This is the, the complete works of the Jewish. This is the history of the Jews, the antiquity of the Jews, right? Look what it said right there. Cleodemus the prophet, who was also called Malchus, who wrote the history of the Jews in agreement with the history of Moses, the legislator relates that there were many sons born to Adam, Abraham and Keturah. Nay, he names three of them, Aphra, Serum and Japhran, that from Serum, the land of Assyria, the Assyrians denominated, and that from the other two, Afer and Japhran, the country of Africa, took its name, because these men were auxiliaries to Hercules when he fought against Libya and Antaeus, and that Hercules married Aphra's daughter, and of her he begat a son, Diodorus, and, the so and, and that Sophon was his son, from whom that barbarous or barbarous people called the Sophatians was denominated. Oh. Oh. Oh, so Hercules married Abraham's granddaughter. And I know that all Greek mythology is built off of the Assyrian and Babylonian kings. You said what? And after and Surum and Japhran are the people that started Syria, the Assyrians, and then all of Africa as far as where they took their name from. You said what now? And if you look, Josephus, this guy lives, I think, 20 or 30 years right after Jesus died. Fiction. Where is Josephus? Cleopatra, Ptolemy, Nicodemus. Hold on, y'all. I'm looking for this up this. Oh, right there. Right under Jesus' feet. Look. So he was alive before Jesus. He was born before Jesus died. Or right at, no, I'm sorry. He was born right in 37, I'm guessing. Jesus died in AD 33, I guess. And he was born in like AD, what, 37? So four years after Jesus was born, I mean, died, he was born, and he wrote the history of the Jews, Josephus. Flavius Josephus. That's why you can't just study the Bible with one book. You cannot. It's not possible. You need more books. What y'all think about that? 
pretty interesting. I knew he was right there with Jesus. I just couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. It's called the uh, Josephus. The Antiquities of the Jews. And y'all see Hercules married Abraham's granddaughter. So there's that. And all of your Greek mythology is built off of the Assyrian and the Babylonian kings. So when you see... Neptune and all of that those are really names of the Assyrian and Babylonian kings so who had flying horses who had magic golden eggs the gate of Perseus is is in is is in ancient Mesopotamia the gate of Perseus is in ancient Mesopotamia it's, it's not over there in Rome And they have, uh, what you call the lion thing? The lion-headed thing there? What is it called? I can't think of it. A sphinx on the outside of the gates. A lion face, I mean a human face with a lion body. The gate of Perseus is in ancient Mesopotamia. You hear me? Mm-hmm. And so now that we know, in the days of Jared, or Jared's son, Enoch, it says, And he was therefore with the angels of God, six jubilees, and they showed him everything which is on the earth and in the heavens, the dominion of the sun, and he wrote everything, and bore witness to the watchers, the ones who sinned with the daughters of men, because they began to mingle themselves with the daughters of men, so that they might be polluted. And Enoch bore witness against all of them. And he was taken from among the children of men, and we led him to the Garden of Eden for greatness and honor. And behold, he is there writing the condemnation and judgment of the world and all the evils of the children of men. And because of him, none of the water of the flood came upon the whole land of Eden. For he was put there for a sign so that he might bear witness against all the children of men, so that he might relate all of the deeds of the generations unto the day of judgment. And he offered... The incense, which is acceptable before the Lord in the evening at the holy place of Mount Qatar. For the Lord has four sacred places on the earth, the Garden of Eden and the Mountain of the East, and this mountain which you are upon today, Mount Sinai and Mount Zion, which will be sanctified in the new creation for the sanctification of the earth. On account of this, the earth will be sanctified from all sin and from pollution throughout um, eternal generations. Mm. Yeah. It's called the Adam Synchronological Chart or Map of History. Now, if you got, can you go to page 64? We're reading in the Jubilees too. So look at this. I'm going to show y'all so y'all can see it. You see that? Corruption of all flesh when the angels um, mate with humans. And where do you find that? Genesis 6, 1 through 5. And in Enoch 6 and 7. This is why they don't want you to read the book of the Jubilees, but the Bible talks about it. Little Genesis. So you can understand what happened at the beginning. important to know I think don't you let's see what it says it says and when the children of men began to multiply on the surface of the earth and daughters were born to them that the angels of the Lord saw in a certain year of that jubilee that they were good to look at the angels of the Lord saw in a certain year of that damn her booty fat she pretty. They said, I can't take you no more. Hold me back. I'm about to go do it. 
She about to... Girl, don't come over here smelling like juices and berries and stuff with your black skin glistening and looking at me like that. Don't be eating that food food like that, girl. I seen the way you was licking your fingers when you was uh, taking that poo poo in there. Don't do that around me. <laughs> I seen it when you was beating that stuff and beating that stuff and you was jiggling, had that little dress on and stuff. I seen you. <laughs> uh -huh, bathing in the red sea and stuff. Don't come over here doing that. Put some clothes on. Listen here. Yes. Listen. Oh, God. All right. He said that they was good to look at. And they took wives for themselves from all of those whom they chose. And they bore children for them, and they were giants. And increased, and injustice increased upon the earth. And all flesh corrupted his way. Man... And cattle and beasts and birds and everything which walks the earth. And they all corrupted their way and their ordinances and they began to eat one another. And injustice grew upon the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of all mankind was thus continually evil. So it said, cows. Are there cow gods? Girl, my brother said that too. They the sons of Seth. I said, you didn't read that right. It distinguishes between sons of men and sons of God. It said when the sons of men, when men begin to multiply, the sons of God saw them. Because it was already seven complete generations, so they just start making giants out of nowhere? Come on. Mm -mm. They were the mighty men of renown, the warriors, the conquerors, the kings. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nimrod and his mama started bell worship. Nimrod married his mama, so his brothers and sisters became his stepkids. They had a real incestuous relationship. Nimrod married his mama. What's her name? Saramis? Why everybody want to walk around wearing Balenciaga in Balmain? Walking around with a nigga that married his mama's stuff on. Well, go on here, then, big, 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 big Draws McGraw. Oh, you think that's something to do, huh? You think you stunting on somebody. <laughs> this nigga married his mama. <laughs> Y'all doing something real, real big. He ain't great. Right. They started by all worship. And Nimrod was a Nephilim. And see, the Bible calls him a mighty, mighty hunter, but you don't know. He was hunting monsters, too. Big draws McGraw. <laughs> he was hunting monsters as well. He wasn't just hunting people. He was hunting monsters and other giants. And was. Mm -hmm. Let's go. The punishment of the angels and the annihilation of their offspring. This would be called the Titan War. The War of the Gods. The Titan War. They was unaliving each other and in unaliving each other's children. We about to read about it. Okay. It says, and the Lord saw the earth, and behold, it was all, it was corrupted, and all flesh had corrupted its order. 
And all who were on earth had done every sort of evil in his sight. And he said, I will wipe out man and all flesh which I have created from upon the surface of the earth. Did he ever say what was living in the earth? He said, I'm going to destroy everything that's living on the surface of the earth. He didn't say everything in the sea. He didn't even say everything that lives in the earth. He said on the surface of the earth. And y'all knew, our, uh, what's the name movie? Aquaman movie. It was a whole kingdom down under the water. Oh, they look just like Petra or Petra. We got explorers that go in caves and it's whole castles and whole cities in the earth. He said on the surface. We have underground civilizations, a civilization that they got whole cities underneath us right now. Do they or do they not? Under the Colorado airport, under a whole bunch of places, there's whole cities that we don't hear or see, and they got everything that we got up here, down there. Right now, living. It's people living down in the ground right now. And they go, what, a hundred stories down? Exactly. So you can't say, oh, I don't believe that because it's happening right now in our day. We got whole people, there's trains under there, they got cars, they got malls, grocery stores, everything. Okay. What's a bunker? Yeah, I seen that man, just seen the giant up in the mountains. And he closed the whole side of the mountain like it was the door. They called them the mountain builders. That's what the Nephilim and the giants were called, the mountain builders. It's another name for them. So if you ever see somebody called a mountain builder, know that they're talking about the offspring of the giants. This is why most of the... Uh, Monolithic structures are built on to the stars and they correlate with the stars because their daddies was from the stars. Each one of those angels used to guard over an element or a planet. And so they have you worshiping, the fallen angels have you worshiping the planet that they used to guard or used to work it. Because each angel had a job, a specific job. They were angels over the stars, just like they show you in Disney with the, um, if they're underground, are they people? What, what do you mean? No. <laughs> I just told you who it is. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. All right. Uh, I will wipe out man and all flesh which I have created from upon the surface of the earth. But Noah alone found favor in the sight of God. And against his angels whom he had sent to the earth, he was very angry. He commanded that they be uprooted from all their dominion. Remember I told you that the angels and the judges was the rulers of the people at first. And kings have what? Dominion. Once they laid down with the women, their wives became the goddesses, the sorcerers. Because the first thing that they did before they ever even went into them and had children, they taught them magic first. Magic medicine. Or what we call pharmacy right now. The word pharmacy literally means witchcraft, incantations, poison, or uh, incantations, witchcraft, 
poison or I can't think of the other one right now. Right. Yeah, it was a real flood, honey. And he's getting ready to burn it up this time. Recipe, thank you. Yeah, spells. Spells, incantations, witchcraft, poison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you look it up, pharmakia, pharmakia. All right, here we go. And you can read that in the sixth and seventh chapter of Enoch. And it'll tell you that they taught them about plants and herbs, how to do incantations, how to undo charms and enchantments. They taught them how to extract metal out of the earth so that they could charm bracelets and to put magic on, on things, to enchant things. Enchantments, yep. Yep, yep, yep. That's in the 6th, 7th, and 8th book of Enoch. And then in the 10th chapter of the first book of Enoch, it tells you where God said, go destroy them, make them unalive each other, and this is where the Titan War comes in. Yep. All right. So it says, and against his angels whom he had sent to the earth, he was very angry, and he commanded that they be uprooted from all their dominions. And he told us to bind them in the depths of the earth. God told Michael Neal to bind the angels in the depths of the earth. Cooper Gunn Jr. made a movie called The Devil's Tomb. And when the American army was going over there in the it said the valley of Dudai or somewhere over there in Iraq or whatever they was digging down and they went down in there and they found a fallen angel encamped in some kind of ice thing and he was trying to get his spirit back up to earth so that he could cause all hell to break loose y'all ever seen the devil's tomb with Cuba it's a real crazy movie Mm -hmm. In that movie, they find a fallen angel down there. And, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. The army finds a fallen angel. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, it says, um, and he told us to bind them in the depths of the earth and behold, they are bound in the midst of them and they are isolated and against their children, a word went forth from before his presence so that he might smite them with the sword and remove them from under heaven. And he said, my spirit will not dwell upon man forever, for they are flesh and their days will be 110 years or 120. And where, you know, it depends on where you're reading it. And he sent his sword among them so that each might kill his fellow. And they began to kill one another until they all fell at the sword and they were wiped out from the earth. And their parents also watched. Ain't that what happened? In the Hercules story, the demigods couldn't see their parents and their parents had to watch while their kids destroyed each other and there was nothing they could do to intervene. Well, that's where they got that part of the story from. Okay. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. All right. Um, it says, and their parents also watched, and subsequently they were bound in the depths of the earth forever until the day of the great judgment in order for the judgment to be executed upon all those who corrupted their ways and their deeds before the Lord. And he wiped out everyone from their places and not one of them remained whom he did not judge according to all his wickedness. Mm. And then the flood came after that. And now you see why God said he was going to blot out the birds and everybody. 
Because the birds had made it with these things, and the birds were being worshipped, and the cows was being worshipped, and the alligators was being worshipped, and all of this. But this is because men and angels lost out because of men, because God gave men dominion over animals and angels. And, and, and animals quit being able to talk because the snake yielded his spirit to Lucifer. And it's a real thing. This is why some dogs and parrots and stuff can still talk. God left a remnant of animals that can still speak. Crazy, right? So when the angels went into the animals and created these animal humanoids... It was a slap in the God's face because men, man had dominion over angels and animals. Well, when the angels went into the animals, then the, the animals and the angels was ruling, like I said, over the human men that God created. And now animals could talk again because God stripped them of their voice. Is the kids up? <laughs> I think I showed this to y'all before. I be forgetting. Baby! <laughs> y'all remember? I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna just leave it. But just know. <laughs> Ooh, shoot. Mm -mm. I can't believe they just had them on the walls like that everywhere. <laughs> Ooh, we, uh-uh. I ain't going to do it. Do it for the grandma. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> no, I'm not, actually. But just know it's a very nice picture. Why does that bird have locks? And human skin and human hands. And he right in there with the regular people. Marquis. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I don't want to make nobody feel bad because that might make some brothers feel bad if they see that. So we just go move on. We ain't even about to... Mm-mm. <laughs> but it's in him. It is definitely in him. Oh, here we go. Our God, hippopotamus God, dog God. Yeah. Wonder why they had those. Wonder why they had these. Could this be because all man corrupted, all flesh had corrupted itself? The birds and the animals of the field and the fish and the reptiles. What did the cows do? They was getting their back blowed out by angels and producing um, offspring that look like this right here. So when y'all see a lot of the Vikings, they didn't have helmets on their they head. Was the horns was on their head? And when you go back and look at a lot of the Persian, um, what's the names? They they have cow people that was running into war. It just says something about the cows and the birds. Elephants. 
And they started miscegenation, which is the mixing of the species. So snake and dog should not be in the same body in a goat or a cat. This should not be. And they started mixing the animals, making monsters. Now, gods ain't uh, horses fly. They kept trying to recreate heaven on earth, and it didn't work. They tried to do what God did and make their own species, take what God made and make their own species of everything, and they made monsters as to why the earth had to be like Narnia and Lord of the Rings. Yep. And every time you see these guys, they was like in Persian, like attire. That's because it was over there. It's called the Resurrectionists. The birds corrupted their flesh. And if you've never seen it, how do you know that this is what the uterus of a harpy look like? And this is what the testes of a Harpy look like if you've never seen one. And how can you tell me how fast they egg grows? Embryo at three days, embryo at seven days, embryo at three weeks, and an egg tooth head at five weeks. How do you know this if you've never seen it? Sweet tooth. You can just draw this out. How do you know the incubation time then? I love y'all. I'm about to go. We've been on here 198 minutes. So I'm about to go. I was supposed to get on here and get off. What time? I don't even know what time it is. <sighs> Bye. Go to sleep. <laughs> go to bed. Good night. I hope y'all enjoyed the class. I love y'all. Newbies. We got 900 classes, over 900 classes on YouTube, Circle Trouble 22. On the live tab, if you like this class, there's more over there. And there are hours and hours and hours and hours long, just like this one. It's over 900 classes like this over there. Circle Trouble 22 on YouTube. Go under the live tab, and it's, oh, we at 947 or something. Make sure you go into the live tab because we say, oh, Sir Carolyn, over oh, there. You didn't look under the live tab, though. You just looked. You didn't look under the live tab. You're going to need to do that. That's the main thing. Look under the live tab, please. Please. We got 946 videos over there. Like this. So, I love y'all. I hope y'all have a good night. Make sure you say your prayers. Kiss them babies. Pray over them babies before y'all go to bed. Good night, everybody. How we go to sleep until the next class? Y'all will y'all gonna be all right. Cause I'm doing my nails tomorrow, so I probably won't see y'all till the afternoon. Cause I was supposed to do them the day I came on here. 